I upset some engineers today. They were wanting some training for their technicians. And I always ask, what is their current experience and where do you want them to get to? You give me those two points and I'll tell you if our training is for you or not. And they wanted online training. I told them right away, you can't teach troubleshooting online. And they said, we just need them to understand enough to identify the components. And then we'll FaceTime with them and they can point the phone at it and we'll do the troubleshooting. And I told him, you didn't give them any better troubleshooting skills. You turned them into a very expensive cell phone holder. That ended our discussion about them coming to our class. But I thought it opened the door for a very important discussion that I have been wanting to have. And I'm going to try to use a story to tell you about this. So imagine that you have a brand new Corvette or whatever expensive sports car you want to imagine. And not only does it have ridiculous horsepower, it has one of the most well-engineered braking systems there are. And Engineering Ed has not only designed that braking system so that it can stop the car as fast as it can start the car, he has also designed it so that it can deal with the heat stress of you constantly hitting the brakes and letting off the brakes and hitting the brakes and let off the brakes. He's cross-drilled the rotors and he has ducked the air and he has made this an engineering marvel. Not only that, but he understands manufacturing processes. So he has designed it so that Assembly Owl can easily put this on. Assembly Owl has a robot that does most of the assembly for him. And all he has to do is grab that caliper assembly, slide it over the rotor, and put two bolts in. It is an engineering marvel, even on the assembly line. Now, technician Tim, he's never seen an assembly line before, and he doesn't understand why Engineering Ed designed a car that in order to inspect the brake, you have to raise the car up, remove the tire, and remove the inner fender well and kind of have your head cocked sideways, but he knows that's what he has to do. Now this leads me to my grand question. If your brakes are grinding, which one of these three, being Engineering Ed, Assembly Al, or Technician Tim, do you want working on your car? And I think you're all going to agree that it is Technician Tim's. And his scope, of looking at this brake system is significantly different than engineering Ed's. So why do we keep sending Technician Tim to engineering Ed's PLC programming class? And this is serious. We talk about the skills gap and can today's technicians learn to work on tomorrow's machine? And then we send them to training classes that have nothing to do with what they're actually going to do out there. Guys, I'm going to go ahead and be honest with you. If you are at this channel and you are looking to learn to program PLCs, I'm probably not the best channel for you. There are better channels out there. I love that you're here. I'll do my best to help. But I teach people to troubleshoot machines. I help you keep your machines running that you already have out there. And that is a whole different viewpoint than programming PLCs. So I really hate that I upset Engineering Ed this week, but also I hope you realize that equipping a technician to hold a cell phone is not a way to troubleshoot a machine. When you really want to learn to troubleshoot PLC controlled machines, click here.